Hey everybody, this is Pastor Luke, back with you for good with our Bibles. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to interpret our Bibles accurately, and we're trying to read them regularly. Today uh, in our reading is Psalm and chapter 26. In Psalm 26, I see something powerful as I've just been reading it here a moment before we started this. That is an antidote to something you hear. You know, sometimes people say, don't pray selfish prayers. Or I've heard people say, if all your prayers came true, would it just make your life better or the world around you better? And those might be good ideas, but it's pushing us in this idea maybe that making us feel like praying and asking God for something personal is somehow selfish. I see here in Psalm 26, listen, vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trust in the Lord without waiting. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with the men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wonderful deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, in whose right hand are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. Last verse. My foot stands on level ground in the great assembly. I will bless the Lord. I believe, if I counted that accurately, that is 26 personal pronouns in 12 verses. What does that say? It says that God is a personal God. Yes, he's the God to all. He's also your God and your king and your friend. And he put this in the Bible so that when you notice it, you would know that he doesn't just care about us. He cares about you. He cares about me. So throw off the unhealthy judgment that part of your prayer life is being, God, I need you. God, you got to come through for me. God, I got this stuff going on. If it's in the Bible, it's good enough for you and for me. And just this simple thought maybe can help you today. What would happen if you poured out your heart to God? Not trying to sanitize it for some cranky Sunday school teacher that wanted you to have Mr. Rogers values and trusted that God really wants to hear from you about what is going on with you today. Might really help you a lot. Hope that's been helpful to you. This is Good With Our Bibles. We'll see you soon.